For six weeks, our Story Plus project team engaged in an exploration of digital live stream DJ events through ethnographic fieldwork. Our overarching question centered around the idea of liveness. How do live streams reproduce the environment of in-person DJ events, and how do they capture the dimensions of space and time for an otherwise distinct experience? Each of us had a few individual research questions concerning genre, social experience, production value, and fundraising to expand on our question of liveness. We drew our definition of liveness from Walter Benjamin's definition of aura in his critical work, The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. There, Benjamin defines the aura as a work of art's unique qualities that cannot be authentically reproduced due to its original presence in a particular time and place. For Benjamin, because digital art is outward facing and infinitely reproducible, its aura is diminished. Our research, however, sought to disprove the notion that the aura can only be contained in live performance and art. Based on our understanding of liveness, we explored how virtual performances recall or recreate the aura of live performance, and how the digital space may also enhance or diminish this aura. During the stream, we took note of our response to visual and sonic media, as well as other listeners' responses with what anthropologist Clifford Gertz referred to as thick descriptions. We employed participant observation and interviews and survey data to try to capture the experience holistically. With these questions ahead of us, we began considering how best to organize and present our work, and who our target audience would be. For us, we felt like an easily accessible and minimal website would best house our research process to reach both academics and people in the DJ space alike. Each of us focused on streams from different regions, including France, Germany, and Spain. Our approach to research was an ethnographic one. Ethnography is a systematic study of customs and practices tied to culture and society. Our team conducted a particular kind of ethnography known as digital ethnography, which transitions ethnographic studies into the online world and shifts focus to online communities. It substitutes some ethnographic study practices with ones more suited for digital environments, while also introducing entirely new concepts to put into action. These include considerations like technical proficiency and practices like the use of online forums as a means of gathering information on digital events. In our case, participant observation can be defined as the observation of viewer interactions with the chat or any other medium the stream provides for the social environment. This was a focus of our streams, as we found it to be a major aspect of the stream's liveness. What is electronic dance music? In order to study live stream DJ events, we first had to learn a bit about its history. During our investigation, we most commonly encountered DJs who played house, a post-disco style of club music that arose in the Chicago warehouse scene throughout the late 70s and early 80s. Early on in our discussions, we watched the Netflix documentary What We Started to learn about the rise of the house music scene in America and abroad. House music and the rave scene emerged from a need for community. Black, Latinx, queer, and other marginalized people pioneered underground cultural movements to form inclusive and socially progressive spaces. Beginning with Chicago House, the genre has branched off into a number of subgenres, including Acid House, Deep House, Bucky House, and Progressive House. Each has its own distinctive sonic characteristics. We also explored techno, which began in Detroit with similar roots in blackness. We interacted with a variety of popular live stream platforms, including Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and even Zoom, to understand how their respective features contributed to the listener's experience of liveness. Most streamers tend to supplement features offered by the platform with their own creative additions to the stream, such as digital effects and visuals, or even dog cams or decorative room setups. Online events and communities can sometimes be attacked by what are known as trolls. This refers to individuals who take advantage of online anonymity in order to purposefully upset and bully others. From the beginning, a strong interest of mine was how the audience, moderators, and streamers would respond to these disturbances. I found that when trolls did show up in the chats or Zoom rooms, what was highlighted above all is the electronic music community's supportive nature. When moderators were slow to respond or entirely absent, 
viewers took to fighting the trolls themselves. For instance, during the Bands in Town stream of May 21st, a couple trolls sent rude and even blatantly sexist messages into the chat when female DJ Gigi McGree began performing. I found that viewer responses in this and other streams could be organized into three primary categories. Viewers who pleaded for the mods to take action, viewers who attacked the trolls, and viewers who fought the trolls' insults with compliments. But the largest of the three categories was by far the third. In the Bands in Town stream, this was shown in messages like, She's a Queen, that began to appear only after the trolls began sending their negative comments. It should be noted that attacks by trolls during live streams were much less common than I originally expected. Furthermore, mods were usually present and quick to act, so that negative comments had a minor impact on the stream. With regard to liveness, I can gather that, although rare, when trolls do infiltrate a stream, the entire social atmosphere can shift to one of support for the stream, for the streamer. Thus, in a weird way, since we've defined liveness as a stream's imitation of an event in the physical world, trolls can usually enhance the feeling of liveness by amplifying viewers' engagement with the present moment, though that engagement may stem from a reaction towards the negative comments. Beyond this question, I also studied the connection between liveness and the choice of music. Though I found multiple connections between these two, perhaps the most interesting and ambiguous connection is what I will call gimmicks. What I mean by this is any underlying theme that was used in deciding on the music for the event. From my studies, I found these gimmicks to range from playing exclusively music by black artists or from a particular time period, to even playing user requests and karaoke tracks. These gimmicks made the stream more fun and audience streamer interaction much more prevalent. What's more, when gimmicks were tied to particular cultures, it made members of those cultures become significantly more active and supportive. For instance, Akira Akira's all-black music stream and Nortec Collective's Norteño influence stream both resulted in an immense increase in the participation of the black and Norteño audiences respectively. This manifested itself in viewers commenting on emotional connections to the music, expressing solidarity with the community, and even starting political debates in the chat. This was a phenomenon that was seen time and time again, and speaks to the electronic music scene's communal nature. As previously mentioned, house music emerged from a need for community. Marginalized groups pioneered underground cultural movements, first through disco, which then evolved into house music to form inclusive and socially progressive spaces, spaces that white musicians and club players would soon co-opt. Although this is apparent in highly commercialized and spectacle-heavy EDM ways today, independent and underground DJs continue to cultivate politically-minded communities. This is evidenced by the DJ livestreams we encountered that emphasized and centered around their communities and engaged their audiences around a particular cause. Through our research, we wanted to know how DJ livestreams engage with community organizing and advocacy, as well as which causes livestreams are advocating for and where the money goes. I'm going to leave you with this one. Because we're going to beat you. Coronavirus. See ya. To answer these questions, we were able to glean information from links and comments in the livestream chat, through DJ shoutouts, and from graphics in the stream. Some DJs offered material or digital incentives for donations like exclusive emotes on Twitch, a shoutout or username feature in the stream, or exclusive merchandise. How DJs solicited donations and the subsequent audience engagement with the causes was carefully observed, noted, and measured in each applicable stream. Our live stream survey had questions pertaining to donations, but even while we employed our survey in at least three popular events, we only had four successful responses. A few streams we encountered, specifically on Twitch, would motivate users by adding donation widgets where donation goals were set and tracked on screen. Some of the causes that were promoted in the streams we attended included Harvest Hope Food Bank, Minnesota Freedom Fund, Black Lives Matter, the LGBTQ Freedom Fund, and the George Floyd Memorial Fund. The last six weeks have, of course, been a particularly relevant time to observe trends in live stream fundraising efforts. The significance of community organizing through performance is foregrounded and almost expected in independent DIY streams. The streams that tailor their events around a particular cause especially recall a sense of liveness, whether funds are for Black Lives Matter, COVID mutual aid, 
or pride, they are inextricably linked to a particularly extraordinary time, a link that cannot be organically replicated. Our ethnographic methodologies were difficult to execute because of our limited means to interact with our interlocutors on a personal level. This led us to often refer to our own feelings of liveness as a gauge for what other listeners were feeling. We discovered that authenticity was a significant factor in the aura of liveness. More specifically, the DJ community's idea of authenticity, which is rooted in the do-it-yourself or DIY mentality of underground subcultures. Prior to the coronavirus pandemic, there were already some DJs who streamed our sets. Over our six-week research period, we saw DJs adopting better technologies and performance practices in order to successfully grow their online audiences. We also noticed that the transition of DJ events to the virtual space presented a dichotomy between active engagement and passive consumption. As brought up in our discussion of Adorno's and Hornheimer's text, the culture industry enlightenment as mass deception. We saw that DJs who were responsive to their audience saw more active engagement in the chat box. Listeners held productive conversations with others in the spaces, discussing anything from what song was being played, where they were listening from, to even how the coronavirus impacted their current lives. Due to the pandemic, strict social distancing measures and lockdowns forced clubs to close their doors and music festivals to cancel their in-person gatherings. We found that the DJ community's quick transition to the digital space was indicative of that DIY mentality mentioned earlier. Many of the DJs we observed tried to juggle multiple responsibilities during their streams in order to create engaging visual, sonic, and social experiences. These artists, all with different resources and skills, have challenged themselves to recreate the essence of live performance, and in their efforts, they have found new ways of connecting with their audiences. In conclusion, our research has revealed fascinating connections between liveness and various aspects of the digital concert experience. Trolls can shift the entire social atmosphere and give new meaning to the concerts present. Musical gimmicks amplify the viewer experience. Livestreams that promote important causes create yet another tie to the present and its current political climate. And the DIY mentality prevalent in the digital concert world lends itself to a sense of authenticity that further strengthens a stream's aura of liveness. The spark that lit the fire of interest for our team was the question of how individuals, especially fans of electronic music, were coping with the COVID-19 pandemic. We believe our findings speak to this and other questions within social psychology, and even other fields such as computer science and philosophy. Nevertheless, we feel there are still lingering questions to tackle. Our goal is to implement the same DIY creative mentality that has fueled the electronic music scene from its inception to promote our site on Duke's campus as well as online communities. Meanwhile, we will continue working diligently to maintain our website and further our findings.